Um, thanks very much, Lascan Corla. I'm glad to get the opportunity to speak on this. And while the, the I suppose the evidence in the the document that we're talking about is shocking and depressing, I suppose, for want of better words. I think it's important that we do actually have that information and that we now act on that information. And I do want to acknowledge some of the steps that have been taken, um, Minister Harris and also Minister McEntee. I think in particular, um, Minister McEntee has really kind of taken this on. Um, and we were lucky to have her visit in Kilkenny, actually, um, to, to, to Amber Women's Refuge. And I, there, there's so much you could say, uh, and there's always so much I want to say on this topic, so I'm going to try and um, it's, uh, kind of confine my remarks to the issue of underreporting. And we have to ask ourselves, why is there such a high level of underreporting? And obviously we know that there is a fear of, will, will people believe me? Um, am I going to be asked, obviously you're going to be asked questions, but are you, are you going to be asked so many questions that you start questioning yourself? There is a kind of almost a sense of guilt that some people have, which they shouldn't have, but that they kind of see, think, should I have done something different? Should I somehow bring this upon myself? And all of that leads into under-reporting. And then when somebody does take the very brave step to go in and report, I think it's so important that they're met with the correct attitude. And this is where I want to pay tribute to the protective services units in Angarda Siakana. Uh, we're very lucky to have an absolutely excellent protective services unit in Kilkenny, and they work really well and in collaboration with, uh, with Amber, our, our women's refuge. And I think we need to look around the country where that system is working and see, can we replicate that? Because they nearly serve, um, and this isn't necessarily their role, and I'd say that I think that they go way above and beyond, but they nearly serve as a one-stop shop for people because we know from the survey that 78% of women, or sorry, 78% of all people, men and women, that have experienced sexual violence, they know the person. So there's often more than just reporting your, your case to the Gardaí. There's often legal implications in terms of if you're seeking maybe a safety order or a protection order. And all of that is such a, a minefield. And you're dealing with all of the emotional stuff that's going on with this as well, that it can be very difficult. And I think all of that leads to under-reporting. So we need to make it a kind of sort of a streamlined um, as, as much as possible. And this is why I think we need to see additional resources being given to the protective services units where they do work really well they certainly definitely need more resources and i know would we'll certainly welcome more resources um but i do think that that's a crucial part of this and we also need to see where we don't have protective services units in the garda Siakana, that that does need to be um something that is available to all people because it totally changes ex people's experiences and, and i certainly know that anecdotally just from constituents that the the level of understanding and empathy um you know where you actually come across people who are trained who are su sufficiently trained is really different i want to briefly touch on the issue of refuge spaces i know it's a little bit different but they're obviously very much linked and just to say that it is something that I am disappointed that we haven't seen more um, work done in relation to providing refuge spaces. We do have an excellent refuge, as I've said, but our refuge covers both Carlo and Kilkenny, um, and Carlo really does need its own standalone refuge as well. And I also want to touch on the point um, that the Ombudsman for Children, in their report to the UN Committee on the Rights of the Child, noted insufficient attention was given to the issue of children affected. Um, by domestic and sexual and gender-based violence. And I think that that is something that we do need to, to look at and bear in mind as well, um, definitely. Um, the other thing that I wanted to just briefly touch on as well, it, and also pay tribute to Safe Ireland and the, the Rape Crisis Centre and all of the work that they have done in relation to just creating more awareness as well with all the supports that they provide for people and also for for the likes of ourselves in this role when you're when you're dealing with people and you also want to always make sure you're given the correct and the right advice but i do think unlike a lot of other sectors that we talk about i think that there is some really really good and and common sense solutions coming from the sector coming from those that work with predominantly women that are in this situation and a, a small amount of additional resources could could mean an awful lot and at the risk of of repeating myself i really do think that one of the key key things 
is those protective services units in the Gardaí. And I think where we have those working well, we need to ensure that they have the correct resources, that they have the correct number of Gardaí, the correct amount of administration staff. And where we don't have those, we need to ensure that Garda stations you know, are given the resources to have those units because it is a key difference for people coming forward and not. Thank you. Thank you